Welcome, everybody. Um, so today we have Rio Hanan from Kyoto, who's going to tell us about non-reciprocal frustration, which sounds very interesting and intriguing to me. So go ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, yes, as Tan has introduced for me. Um, today I would like to introduce. I think it's a new concept that. I decided to develop non-reciprocal frustration, where I would like to argue and hopefully convince you that non-reciprocal interactions, which is a concept that you can only define in non-equivalent setups, have a direct analogy uh, to a geometrical frustrated system, which um, in many cases is in, um, in, considered in the context of equivalent many-body physics. And I would like to show that the um, the uh, uh, this analogy can give rise to um, um, can show that non-reciprocal interaction can induce something called like a order by disorder or spin glass phenomena, which is a salient feature of frustrated system. Okay, so that's the point. So um, I would like to start with a reminder that equilibrium systems are characterized by minimizing the free energy or energy in F0 temperature. So as you can see, like for example, for an XY model, you write down your energy and in order to um, get the ground state, you would like to find the configuration that minimizes this energy. But what this immediately um, implies is that all the coupling that's here have to be reciprocal from definition. But however, once it's out of equilibrium, this doesn't have to be true, and therefore non-reciprocal coupling can arise. Um, this might sound crazy at first, but if you look around the world, you can immediately notice that that's not the case. You know, if, if, if a falcon sees a pigeon like this, probably it will start this case and runaway motion. And but that is induced by this non-reciprocal interaction that not that does not satisfy the Newton's third law and and it is kind of clear that how falcon affects vision is not the same as how vision affects cell. And you can see this in a very broad context of systems in um, outside ecological systems. Um, it's known that neural networks are composed of what's called the excretory and inhibitory neurons that are known to non reciprocally interact. And um, a living matter. Um, can be, uh, it, it's recently shown in surface embryos that um, uh, collective phenomena that can only be induced by non-reciprocal in, uh, interaction can arise. And also, well, unfortunately, social networks are also non-reciprocal, you know, because just because you like one guy doesn't really mean that the other guy doesn't like you, uh, unfortunately. And, um, and of course, in uh, but um, outside this um, uh, area of, of research that might uh, traditionally be considered um, beyond physics, even in the physical systems, like in the Bergen system, people have been successful in um, embedding um, this or um, making non-reciprocal interaction happen in a you know, controlled way. Um, so what I'm interested in is what happens if there's many, many, um, many uh, uh, agents that are non reciprocally interacting, and what are the emerging collective properties of this non reciprocally interacting many body system? So, just as to give an example or like a subfielding of what, what happened, let me consider a very simple model, uh, which is the non reciprocal blocking model. So, this model is, um, is just a our, um, our favorite uh, big check model, but something generalized here is that it's composed of two groups, A and B, uh, blue and red. And A groups want to align. Um, they reciprocally interact and try to align, just like in the usual case, and um, it's the same for B too. But the special thing here is that we are assuming that um, A and B are non reciprocally interacting, Meaning that J A B and J B A can be um, different, uh, meaning that the system is not reciprocal, and uh, because of that, this equation of motion 
no longer cannot be um, written as a derivative local control. So what would happen? Let's, let's see what's gonna happen. So for, uh, in the reciprocal case, when the noise is very large, of course there's disorder, and when, but if you- That was also moving, so there's also phase for I. Yes, yes, which I omitted. <laughs> and actually it's not that essential. So um, the, the same phenomenology works for, um, for um, non-self-propelling. <laughs> Well, at, at least at the mean field level uh, calculation. Yeah. So, um, so in the reciprocal case, at high noise, of course, you get a disorder state. If you decrease your noise um, low enough, you'll have a phase transition, as we know. That and in this group, two group case, uh, we have two types of mode. Oh. Yeah, uh, where. Uh, when J A B and J B A are paramagnetic, A and B once aligned. While if A and B are kind of anti-aligned, then they'll converge to this anti-aligned phase. But what happens in the non referral case? Well, what happens is the following. So where A and B, because A wants to align with B and B wants to anti-align with A, it starts this chase and run away motion. But interestingly, um, this spontaneously breaks a Z2 symmetry, you know, where the um, it, whether it goes to left-handed or right-handed um, is uh, depending on the initial condition. So how should we understand this in, in, from the general perspective? You know, just like in a, how we can understand this, can we construct a general theory in uh, analogy to the Landau theory, like in a Gilbert theory? So, you know, how do we understand this? Well, um, the Landau theory for equivalent um, phase transition, the strategy is write down number of equal free energy and write down all the terms that is allowed from the symmetry and um, try to look for the minimum. But this does not work for non equivalent cases. However, what we can do even in non equivalent system is that we can directly write down this dynamical system motion that is allowed from symmetry. And the, the, the uh, essential part here is that we completely give up writing down free energy. So it doesn't have to be a derivative of a free energy anymore. Because of this, um, the coefficient doesn't have to be symmetric anymore. And as a result, if you want to look at the steady state of the system, this equation of motion is characterized by this um, long, non-linear our Hermitian eigenvalue problem. Okay, now, because this eigenvalue is eigen uh, matrix is non-reciprocal, it turns out that it gives rise to a new type of phase transition which we decided to call non-reciprocal phase transition. So if it were Hermitian, like in the reciprocal systems, all the eigenvectors have to be orthogonal to each other. But if, when it's non-Hermitian, it doesn't have to be. And there's a special point called an exceptional point where they, these vectors coalesce. It turns out that this point marks the, um, the align to the chiral phase transition in the continuous description of a model that I described. So, um, and because this is uh, characterized by this exceptional point, meaning that there's like a one-way coupling, um, it immediately tells you that the system breaks a detailed balance and therefore, at this exceptional point condition cannot occur in equivalent. So there's no equivalent counterpart of this type of phase transitions. So, um, and I want to emphasize that this is a very general um, feature, you know, because you, uh, I haven't really look, um, used any details about the model except that they have a continuous symmetry break. And therefore it uh, occurs in very general um, active multi-component order systems like blocking, synchronization, pattern formation, um, and um, driven bose einstein components, which is actually the first example that we uh, we found this transition type of transition. It, it's, uh, oops. Yeah, so, and what's interesting is that because this, of this exceptional point feature, 
um, it turns out that it will give rise to a normally enhanced fluctuation associated with uh, a, norm, a more critical phenomenon. And because of this anomalous and application, recently people have shown, uh, including Sarah and uh, uh, Thomas in the audience, uh, where um, the fluctuation can induce fertile transition or some divergence of entropy for that then at low growth limit. So, um, so that was kind of one example of an uh, interesting phenomena that can occur in non reciprocally interacting system, but there's Many more. Um, so all elasticity is a phenom uh, is a yeah, it is the property that can emerge in the presence of non reciprocal interactions, uh, or more broadly when the beta bounce is broken, where um, you can have a odd component of the uh, elastic moduli. And again, uh, as Sarah had pointed out, that you can have a long range order that emerge even in 2D um, when not risk going tracking is, uh, is present. And actually these non risk point traction, I mean, the study of non risk point traction is actually not new um, in where in the um, context of ecosystem, people have shown that biodiversity in ecosystem, uh, uh, the non risk point traction is uh, responsible for that. And also the control of the neural dynamics, uh, it's the non sport coupling uh, has been uh, argued to be uh, playing a big role. So, um, so there's like many interesting uh, phenomena that occurs um, in non visible systems, and there's a lot more to uh, explore. Okay. So, the main message of this talk is going to be. Uh, to understand this kind of non risky interacting system, I'd like to argue that one interesting way of looking at it is to look at it as an uh, analogous system to geometrically frustrated system. So, um, yeah, and I'm going to argue that non risky interactions are source of frustrations. So, you know, um, I think this might sound crazy, but if you Consider this widespread non-reciprocal coupling example. Uh, I think this is maybe the most common non-reciprocity in the in our daily life. Well, maybe not, um, but um, but yeah. Um, this and I think if you think about this, I think this it, it's very clear, right? I mean, it's almost obvious that non-reciprocal interactions are a source of frustration. You know, so. Like when let's say A and B Alice and Bob, and let's um think of this as a distance, you know, like a, a social distance between and and let's say that let's consider first reciprocal relationship when they like each other, what they should do is to be best buddies, right? Uh well maybe you might say that, well, not reciprocal relationship, but when they dislike each other, that might be source of Frustration, but that's not really true because there's a solution. You know, if they <laughs> there's a clear solution that and when they don't talk to each other, that's uh yeah, both of them are, are not unhappy. <laughs> but the real problem happens when non-reciprocal relationship happens, when A likes B but B dislike it. Then now there's no configuration that can make both of them happy, and this is nothing but a frustration. So for me, I mean, as a condensed matter theorist, uh, that uh, for a person like me who have a background in condensed matter physics, this reminds me of uh, another source of frustration, which is a geometrical frustration. The geometrical frustrated system is defined as a system that cannot satisfy all the constituents desire to minimize all the interaction energy. So what it, what it means is that um, Say you have an interacting lattice model, and the question is, can you um, minimize the energy of the each bond? So one um, very typical example is the empty ferromagnetic coupled system on a triangle lattice, where if you have a spin up here, and in order to minimize this energy, you want to put them down here. But if 
uh, for this font to be happy, you want to put this as an up state, but that it will make this font not happy. So um, there's um, unfortunately no configuration that can make all these things happy. You know, kind of a conceptually, you know, at a very vague sense, uh, similar to non-responsibly interactive systems. So the typical um, gen, gen, um, emer uh, selling a feature of these kind of systems is that they often, not always, but often have accidental degeneracy of brain states. You know, because um, you know, not everybody can be happy at the same time. So somebody have to compromise, but um, but oftentimes, you know, there's many ways for the, I mean, who who have to compromise and who does not have to. Um, there's some degrees of freedom there. So and but because of that, you get some degeneracy. And this is not a degeneracy that originate from any symmetry or anything. It's just arriving accidental. Accidental. So because of this accidental degeneracy of the ground state, it has to be shown in the condensed matter uh, physics community that um, number of interesting phenomena arises. One is what's called the order by disorder that I'm going to uh, explain. And stained glass and is also another example. And uh, classical or quantum spin liquid where um, some type of excitation can be considered at a as a magnetic molecule can oh sorry uh sorry uh classical spin liquid where sorry uh the where the, at zero even at zero temperature the system does not order and occur and also the spin ice is something where um the excitation of the system for example have some mag uh, magnetic molecule uh, at their extent. so. Um, and these are all because of this accidental differency of cramp states. So the um yeah, the so one um famous example is order by disorder, and emphasize here. So because accidental degeneracy is not really protected by symmetry or anything like that, it's really fragile. So it's of course fragile against external field, but it's also uh, fragile against from this you know disorder like thermal noise or quantum noise or some weak random potential is kind of enough to lift this disease and oftentimes not always but oftentimes oh sorry so and therefore these the jersey uh is i mean the the noise is going to select some grand state and oftentimes uh, not always but it's um uh, it happens to be an ordered state and when that happens um, the thermal adding noise to the system is going to give rise to more order in the system, which is a kind of a counterintuitive phenomenon. And this is um, called order by disorder. So this is one well-known example, uh, which is an um, antithermagnetic magnetic on a lattice called polar lattice matrix. So this system is known to have macroscopic number of degeneracy and um, this is one typical example of them. And as you can see, it's kind of clearly a disorder state. But once you add thermal uh, increased temperature and make it to a finite temperature, it turns out that uh, the, the, what it, uh, it's the long range order with a collinear uh, this, uh, alignment is going to emerge. And so this is nothing but a word by the system. So uh, my a natural question arises whether the counterpart of these kind of phenomena occurs in non fully interacting system, or in particular, is there a counterpart of accidental disturbance of ground states in non fully interacting system? So you know it doesn't seem promising, right? Because there's no energy, and you cannot define energy. So how should I define a ground state? Is one problem? Also. It may not even this non-school interaction in system may not even convert to a static state. So how do I think about these? Is again uh, an open question. But um, here I would like to argue that um, yes, there is a counterpart of accidental degeneracy of ground state, but it's not accidental degeneracy of ground state, but it's accidental degeneracy of orbits, or in a more familiar language, 
a marginal orbit will arrive. And this can be shown by um, proving a Lugo type theorem. So, um, and as a result, a dynamical count, I would like to argue that a dynamical counterpart of worldwide disorder and spin glass like state will occur. Yeah. The frustration in the nuclear system, you know, you need it, you need the extreme part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess in, 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 in the active system, it seems more than two parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, does that, can one understand that? Uh, uh, so, what, how is, I mean, so that's, there's something that the many body behavior is not quite the same. Um, it depends on what you mean by the same. Uh, so maybe, maybe um, I'll go through it and maybe you can ask later uh, whether it's, yeah, like, because, yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be yes and no. And so, yeah, but sorry, the answer will be yes and no. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, so I'll wait. Okay, so uh, any questions? So then, um, just to be concrete, although the concept that I'm going to introduce, I expect to be very mm -hmm. general, um, let me focus on this dissipative XY spin models. And here, um, because this is the most simplest. And so here, um, the couplings are, I mean, can be non reciprocal in general. So let, um, for a reciprocal case, when Jij equals to Jji, um, this equation of motion will boil down to the energy minimization problem where energy is given by this expression. So if you um, choose your potential E to be have geometric pull frustration, then uh, many accidental degenerate grounds would appear. Um, pictorially, what this mean, would mean is that given this energy as a function of um, configuration, um, you have this flat, um, this uh, um, yeah, a uh, flat part in in the energy, um, and which denotes the accidental deserve of the gram states. Um, in the language of dynamical systems, this means that the orbits will have this form, where uh, for uh, different initial conditions, it will um, converge to different um, gram I mean, uh, fixed form. And and because this have a flat uh, uh, flat uh, part in the energy landscape, um, this these fixed points will be marginal. So um, in the anti what about the anti symmetric part in the non reciprocal case? And in the uh, in the non reciprocal case, in the limit of the anti symmetric case, or you know, so to say, the non reciprocal limit. Uh, we'll, it turns out that you the real real pipe theory will apply, and what this means is that although the system is in general dissipative, generically dissipative, in this time to limit you get a converse conservation of phase one, meaning that there's non dissipative dynamics will go on. Um, so it sort of means that these kind of marginal orbits is allowed, but uh, in this limit these kind of limit cycles where um, the system will converge to some sort of attractor is not really allowed in this limit. Um, so let me give like a very simple example. It's just two spin case with, uh, with anti-symmetric coupling. So in this case, I mean, this is very easy and it's solvable. So for a given initial state, um, this uh, the dynamics of this will be something like this, where A will sort of take B. But if you start with a different initial state, the, the rotation will go the other way around. But more importantly, the uh, speed of this rotation can be different, and which means that there's um, the state that it will, um, oh yeah, the orbits that would occur is initial state dependent. And, and so on. And so if you have a different one, there's another dynamics going on, and so on and so forth. So these can be understood as some sort of like non-reciprocal frustration induced accidental degenerative orbits. In this case, parameterized by the difference between the two, and I mean the initial um, difference between the two angles. So um, to summarize, the analogy that I'm 
trying to make here is that there's common feature between geometrical appropriated and the non school system is that there's marginal orbits. Um, is um, for the, uh, the speed, I mean, the frequency um, for the initial uh, for the uh -huh. lifetime of the uh, station. I thought the, it is this uh, magnitude of the J in the Ah, yeah, yeah, yes. So uh, is, is it different for, for the two? Uh, yes, it is uh, different. Uh, I'm expecting for them to be the same. So actually, for example, like the ultimate example is if you start with theta A and theta B to be equal, then find theta b theta is zero. This is zero too. So theta a dot is zero. No, I'm talking about uh, what sets this time scale. So uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. But uh, it's it's determined by by j um, because j is equals to j a b is equals to minus j b a. So uh -huh. just say equals to some. Yeah. So some the overall number. time scale is yes set by j. Let me call that j minus. Okay. But but that j minus. I mean the speed, the actual speed is given by j minus times sine delta theta. So if delta theta is, for example, zero, then it doesn't move. Yeah, because like if you put theta b equal theta a, then it's yeah. I mean theta a dot is zero, and theta b dot is zero. So so the speed is initial state dependent. The order of magnitude gets uh, given by j a b and j b a, but uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, did I answer your question? You yeah, we'll make you talk about that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and there's, I mean, and this accent of the term over is, I mean, this uh, real wheel type theorem, I mean, literally like three line proof. So, this um, start to have, I mean, so you start with a continuity equation, and this continuity equation for the uh, probability distribution is, you know, you can der der uh, do a derivative by parts. But if you look at this quantity here, um, is, you know, you can just plug in all the numbers and to show that um, because of the anti symmetric coupling, this is going to be zero. Yeah, so therefore this term vanishes and as a result, you get a uh, conservation of the loop of there. And this type of, um, you know, Proof can apply to many more examples like non responding interacting particles and Heisenberg's. So, uh, okay, so now having established this static analogy, now I'm going to ask what happens in a many body state. So, as I have told you, in geometrical prostate case, this kind of accidental different grand state can give rise to the so called order of vibrancy phenomenon. So, um, just to recall, at zero temperature, you minimize the energy. And in the case of geometrical approximated systems, you get this absent of But now, if you want to, if you go to finite temperature, you now minimize the free energy instead of the energy. And unlike in the conventional case where the degeneracy arises from symmetry, the, the you know, if the degeneracy come, arises from symmetry, the entropy is also going to be configuration independent. But here, yeah. because this degeneracy is coming I mean, just accidentally, um, there's no reason that the entropy is also, or the fluctuation uh, properties are also configuration independent. So therefore, it's generically going to be, the entropy is going to be dependent on the configuration. And as a result, if you increase the temperature, this free energy form would have, um, would be dominated by this entropical term. And as a result, we get entropically such a grand state. And a lot of times this just happens to be an order state and therefore we get uh, entropically uh, induced uh, order, order. So if you want to translate the dynamics, um, kind of in a neutral picture, you can write down, write this down like this, where this energy is because the system is marginal, you don't have this contribution, but you have this entropical force that dominates the dynamic. So a generic feature here is that for a geometrical frustrated system, the entropical force is going to select the orbit, and that's the 
trigger of order by this number. So my question is that the same position for a non split injecting system. So of course the answer is yes. And um, let's let me just um, uh, demonstrate this by a very simple example, very similar to what I showed in the in the, in the initial part of my talk, uh, which is the X, uh, X Y spins uh, with um, A and a loop with A and B. So I have. I now, for just for just technical reasons, simplicity, I have all to all coupled A group and all to all coupled B group. And like in the um, in the mold, the block non-reciprocal blocking model that I showed before, um, this A groups will have reciprocal interaction that ferromagnetic, and B group will is the same too. But now the J A B and uh, you know A group and B group. If M P is into three couple. So in the absence of the noise, um, because there's nothing that prevents A group spins aligned within themselves, and the same for B, this A group and B group will um, just be just be aligned and just behave as one macroscopic spin. And as a result, um, this many body system will just fall down to Two body problem, and because of that, everything that I just told you before will, I mean, will apply. Where this accidental degeneracy of the orbits is going to be parameterized by this um, angle dependence delta phi. So if I start from this delta phi, I have this dynamic, I have different delta phi, a different dynamic delta one, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to add. Then what's going to happen is that we will have get, uh, fluctuations, of course. But the key point here is the way this fluctuation occurs is going to be um, configuration dependent. And as a result of this, um, the macroscopic spin dynamics uh, is going to be renormalized and now would have delta phi dependent renormalized couple. And Remembering that, recalling that this marginal orbit is contingent on the fact that um, JAB is exactly at minus JDA, what you would expect is that this delta phi dependence will give rise to um, mode selection uh, or orbit selection, as one at what you saw in the German school process. So, um, just to be precise more, um, I mean, and with some algebra more. In the normal noise case, the delta phi dot uh, dependence can be written as follows. And if I just put JAB equals to minus JBA, this is zero. And this, because this is marginal, um, delta phi dot is, uh, delta phi is a constant of motion. But if I add noise, this, these will get renormalized like this. And because of this, you get this new contribution. And the interesting part here is that because this is um, proportional to the sine delta phi, you get a new type of new fixed point that is, was absent here at plus or minus pi over two. So, um, and actually this corresponds to the chiral phase in the, uh, through this work. So, and therefore, you know, the entropical force or the noise driven um, force uh, it's going to favor this delta phi plus plus minus. Um, this is the demonstration of this. Uh, so in the normal noise case, uh, uh, so this is a function of P and uh, delta phi. And of course, in the normal noise case, um, the uh, delta phi is a constant in motion. But if I have noise, um, yeah, as, as you can see, this system will select this plus or minus pyrrhic. And actually this corresponds to the chiral phase. And uh, right. So yeah. Um so I yeah. So what I have been working on was I mean focusing on was this anti-symmetric like fine tune limit. But uh, what does this physics imply to a more generic case when it's not exactly at JAB equals to minus. Well, then 
uh, what happens is that you have I mean, new terms arriving here, uh, where in addition to the entropical force, um, you get some energetic, you know, like energetic terms that favor self applied to zero. Um, I think I forgot to say, but they, um, this expression is for small, small J plus regime. Um, and because of this, so there's a competition between the two contributions where at very low noise, this energetic part will favor this aligned phase where phi A and phi B is same. But as you increase the noise, it will try and um, uh, it would um, start to favor um, finite delta phi. And as a result, you will expect a phase transition. And this is exactly what you see. So this is a, um, a, the simulation for uh, simulation result for delta phi as a function of noise strength. And as you see, uh, delta phi equals zero is going to bifurcate or phase transition to a delta phi non-zero case. And I want to emphasize here that when delta phi equals zero, this is Z2 symmetry. While by increasing noise, what you get is uh, a solution that either have plus or minus, which spontaneously breaks the Z2 symmetry. So this is like a noise induced symmetry breaking, which is opposite from what you expect. Um, by the way, uh, we found this kind of features in our previous work, um, and but um, we didn't really have a good uh, physical description of why this happens, but I think now we have um, an interesting uh, this, uh, explanation, uh, which hopefully is now clear. All right, so what I have been showing so far is when and, uh, one thing we can say is that this is essentially this is always a new field, so you always essentially ignore it. Yeah. So yeah, and I guess you could in principle do a yeah yeah yeah. So actually, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so actually, I have one model um, that um, I analyzed this lattice model. Um, although um, I have to say that this is just a like a perturbative analysis, I didn't do any like RG or anything like that. And uh, but but nevertheless, uh, at least at the perturbative level, uh, the overall description is just the same. And I think it's. Uh, yeah, so what I mean by that is that near the critical point, it's um, it's really dangerous to do perturbation because uh, some non-trivial uh, nonlinear effect can uh, arrive, uh, be dominant there. But we, I believe that mm -hmm. in the deep in the chiral phase, that should be all right. And even in uh, yeah, and but at least there, um, it does have this noise induced. D2 symmetry breaking, even for the lattice in all case. Yeah. So, um, so what I have been considering so far is looking at the simplest two community problem where this accidental degeneracy is characterized by this one parameter phi A minus phi B. But a more dramatic effect will occur when you consider uh, well, one macro, uh, when the degeneracy becomes macroscopic, or at least I found one model that does that. So uh, what I'm going to consider is a system that have this arrays of um, groups. So, so it's a little confusing, but um, where, uh, sorry, but uh, this absence of literacy is now confirmed by, by many parameters. So, so um, this is a little confusing, but I have um, each um, a and B consists of many, many particles, uh, many, many spins, and these are all, all to all connect within the group. And this A group is assumed to have no reciprocal interaction between this B group and this B group, all to all connected. But this A group is, does not have connection to this group. Okay. So, I mean, this is kind of a um, some artificial model that I kind of um, constructed. So in this case, each group is going to be uh, characterized by this order parameter that I know psi A n and psi B n at psi n. And 
for simplicity, let me consider a system that have uh, uh, instead of the stochastic noise, I have some points disorder with this low uh distribution. And what I mean by being this being more simpler is that um, Ott and Anderson have very nicely shown that in these kind of systems, I mean, this chromodal type of models, um, this Ott Anderson enzymes uh, of the, I mean, for the order parameter dynamics can be exactly um, shown to obey this um, simple equation. But, so, yeah, it's very easy to simplify. Okay, so what happens in, firstly, what happens in the disorder less case of clean limit with no, um, where I put the disorder with the all zero. Then, unsurprisingly, what you get is this mess. So this, uh, so this is, I'm plotting here all the order parameter for A uh, as a function of site N and time T and the same for order parameter is D. So as you can, See, I mean, this is kind of more or less clear that it's a chaotic uh, dynamic. But now I'm going to add a strong disorder to B site. And what, as a result of this, what, what's going to happen here is that, yeah, um, you, you get an anti symmetric or anti chromatic order by disorder um, in the A word parameter, which is. Again, kind of kind of kind of So this can be understood kind of, uh, easily by tracing out the B degrees free. So because the system is disordered, it damps fast. So the B order parameter can um, uh, uh, A order parameter can uh, diabetically follow the B dynamics. So therefore, I can safely trace out the B degrees of freedom, which do and as a result of that, you get some effective AA coupling. And this effective JAA coupling, well, I mean, this reminds you of some sort of second order perturbation theory, where this I means have a form of JAB times JBA over the you know the damping rate. And because JAB and JBA are have opposite signs, this have antichromatic coupling. So actually, this was this model was inspired by what's called the domino model in the which is actually the first model to introduce um, German uh, order by disorder in geometrical Lee case, and, and more or less the physics of this model is the same. Okay, so that's um, that was the story for the order by disorder. And let me just switch gears. I don't know how much. Do you Okay, okay. So let me switch gears to talk about the spin glass um, phenomenon. So in another um, striking example of geometrically frustration induced um, uh, phenomena is the so-called spin glass. So this is um, so one example is what's called the Sherrington Kirkpatrick model, where um, it's an all to all coupled model where J I J have random coupling. And because these have all random coupling, again, there's no configuration that can make everybody, everyone happy. And as a result of this, you have many, many minima that can arise. Um, so this is a schematic um, picture of the basic, I mean, potential of this. And because this is like very dump, bumpy, it takes extremely slow, uh, it's, it, takes extremely uh, long time to reach the real steady state. And these are the generically have no long range. Of so uh, what the typical uh, feature that arises from this is so-called uh, aging phenomena, where this is the correlation function, I mean, two time correlation function of the spins. And as you can see, the um, the dynamic, I mean, this correlation function as a function of time is um, it, uh, it, in the and different uh, different lines correspond to different weight of time, pw, which is called a weight in time. And as we can see clear, the 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 more time you wait, it takes more time to decorrelate. 
but the scales are like much, much longer than the microscopic um, scale. So the coupling constant is like one here, but it's taking like tens of power six to reach the real city. So this is uh, one uh, typical feature of the thing glass. So um, the question is, can non simply cold frustration also give rise to these glassy dynamics? So uh, what I considered here was, uh, for simplicity, just one dimensional random spin model. And so it's, it's a very simple model where this is a XY model again on you know, one dimensional uh, chain. And now the couplings are assumed to be uh, random. And I just put a cutoff for uh, JI so that um, the system will not like, completely decouple, but turns out that this was not really essential. Okay. So then um, if they were reciprocal, then um, you can easily see that this system does not have geometrical frustration. Uh, what I mean by that is, let's say this was ferromagnet, this was antiferro, antiferro, ferro, and so on and so forth. Then in the reciprocal case, once you fix one of the angles like this, you can find a unique ground state of this. Like, because this thing wants to align with this guy, this thing wants to anti-align with this, this one wants to anti-align, and so on and so forth. So you can make uh, this chain to have um, any ground state up to the symmetry. So this have no geometrical frustration, and as a result of that, you get like a nematic order. This is. So um, the reciprocal system limit of this, yeah, is has a geometrical, no geometrical frustration, and therefore um, we can safely talk about non-reciprocally induced uh, phenomena in this form. So let's just look at the simulation result of this non-reciprocal random chain and where uh, Jij and Jvr are here taken to be independent to each other. And this is the site index and this is the uh, time uh, normalized by the uh, the width of the interaction. And, oops, and what I'm Going here is the theta i but mod pi instead of two pi because the it's it, in the uh, reciprocal limit for example it all goes down to this nematic order so um, this having mod pi will kind of give, easily let you see that I mean there can be some partial nematic order uh, in uh, locally but as you can see you can kind of see in some of the, I mean the systems it into some domains and you can see kind of like a periodic kind of state like this and some domains will have some chaotic domain dynamics and so there's a lot of mess going on but if you plot this as a function i mean if you uh, compute the time correlation function in spatial correlation function um, you get the uh, get something like this uh, where as a function of time, and um, you get this kind of um, a clear sign of aging phenomena with a, this parallel decay. So there's no typical time. I mean, the time scale is not present in this. While in the if you look at the spatial correlation function as a function of the um, interest, uh, then yeah, distance, you, you can see how this is converging to a um, exponential. Well, actually, um, if you look closer, it turns out to be a uh, stretch exponential, but it still has some um, factors length scale. Uh, so these two features are reminiscent of spin glass. So this is to be compared to the, I mean, this non spin glass state that emerged in this system is pretty similar to this Palo, I mean, uh, sorry, it's be compared to uh, we contrast it, sorry, to the nematic order, where in the reciprocal case, you get um, nematic order. And it turns out that this also is going to be a very slow uh, dynamics. But still, if you look at the spatial correlation, it's obviously reaching towards a long range um, spatial order. Long range spatial correlations, while 
and if you and this is also different from the noisy case where you get a disorder state where um, this spatial and time correlation function are just simple, both simple exponential. So uh, I'm arguing that this um, non this this um, non score interaction can induce uh, some analogy of non um, spin glass like state. So with that, I'll like to summarize that I have pointed out a direct analogy between geometrically and non-reciprocal frustration physics. And this arises because the non-reciprocal interaction can give rise to uh, mar um, marginal orbits, which can be regarded as accidental degeneracy um, of grams, you know, uh, uh, the, the count dynamical counterpart of accidental degeneracy of grams. And as a result, we get order by disorder and the And with that, I would like to thank you all for That's a lovely talk. Um, any questions? And this is so uh thank you very much. Very beautiful. Um I have a question to the name that you gave to this uh, degeneracy, you called it accidental degeneracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you put the interacting units on a lattice, then I think you require the lattice to be in, um, to have some symmetry, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a disordered lattice. I think if you go from an yeah. ordered lattice to a disordered lattice, it would have a similar effect. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Adding yeah. Noise, or also maybe as adding, yeah, as yeah. adding uh, noise in the interactions. Mm -hmm. But can you comment a bit? What will be dominant? The effect of will it be more like thermal noise if you add a static disorder to lattice, or will it be more like your J J noise, like the interactional noise? Uh, because you had two types a... of noise. Yeah, you had noise in the added noise, and you had mm -hmm. interaction noise. And and yeah, I imagine yeah. lattice disorder. Could be similar to both, but which one? Um, unfortunately, I don't have an answer to it, but that's an interesting question to ask. Yes, um, but so far I don't know the answer. But thanks for that interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the very 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 interesting talk. Um, I have also a question about um, the noise and uh, degeneracy. So. Um, you showed that in uh, the case of the two coupled uh, spins, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe you can uh, go back to the slide. Um, the the noise um, destroys this degeneracy, yeah. but um, I didn't really understand uh, how, how this works uh, because um, I mean all, all these uh, orbits with different turning. Um, Velocities and phase shifts don't they occupy like the same phase space volume? So, so or, or... I can answer that by just letting you see the derivation. <laughs> um, I just decided to skip the derivation because, yeah, I or but yes. yeah. Okay, so maybe um this would answer the question. So. Okay, I'm starting with this equation of motion. It's also a couple of things for simplicity. And because of this simplification, my life will get easier because I, if I introduce order, I mean, order parameter, it just falls down to just one body problem. Mm -hmm. But with some um, effective field that's coming, coming from the order. Now, uh, yeah, so when, okay, let me start with no noise. Then, if in the absence of the noise, all the theta i a will align. So theta i a will be equal to phi a. And so, so uh, I get this two spin model. And when, yeah, so and as I told you, this will have marginal orbits when they be testing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's add I mean, noise to this and look at the fluctuation. And I'm assuming that noise is still small. So I linearize this equation. And because I linearize it um, very fortunately, you can um, 
the, the system and you can um, compute the distribution function from the Fokker Planck equation and and so you get the width. I mean it's just Gaussian because it's a linear but but the crucial point is that this width is now configuration dependent. So which orbit this system decided to be will affect how much you know fluctuation effect you will get. And so um this this for simplicity, when if you consider a case where delta phi will converge to a constant, um, or well, this delta is effective, this phi a minus phi is a constant, just like in the two snake case, uh, you get uh, explicit extension like this. Okay, using this, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna again look at the order parameter dynamics. So, um, like right order parameter dynamics as you know, psi a dot is equals to like. I can separate into amplitude and phase dynamics. Um, this is what I get by differentiating um, the this hand side, and you know, and also by um, and this one is just using the definition of psi a, and I compare this to you know I can plug in theta i dot. Uh, here. I can insert this guy here, and as a result, I mean. I mean, it's a very simple math that you can do it, and you get this expression by just simply plugging in. And also by assuming that this summation i self averages, meaning that this summation over i can be replaced with the probability distribution, I mean, the, the noise average, then I get this expression. Uh, where they we have a now like a um, renormalized coupling, and by extending this expression, I can get the yeah the the uh, the the renormalized equation of origin. Yeah. yeah. So all the expression I got. So so yeah, because of this renormalization. I get, yeah, this additional quantity to be in. Now they have some new fixed point that's of that. Thing. So, you know, if, um, I didn't emphasize, but in the absence of the noise, yeah, in the absence of the noise, and if JAB was not equal to JBA, all you can get is delta phi equal to zero or delta phi equal to pi. So the mm -hmm. only, yeah, so you, you don't have any chiral phase in this thing. But because there is noise, um, this noise will generate a new fixed point, which is given by cosine delta phi equals zero. But actually, it's more there. I mean, I'm just picking a uh, JAA equals JBB equal uh, equal case, and if it's a different expression, will differ a little bit. But um, either way, the you get um, a new type of a new fixed point that's generated by this. I would call it like an entropical noise. Uh, yeah, and that will give, I mean, give rise to this next point. Did that answer your yeah. question? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for a very nice talk. Uh, behind that mathematical explanation, do you have any intuition as to where the entropy comes from? What What's the biasing? Um, in these spin, in these so uh, not really sure. I mean, if I can pull that down to this expression, but uh, I can tell you why the chiral phase, you know, the delta phi equals zero, delta phi equals pi phase. Uh, I mean, sorry, the phase that is not at delta phi e e equals zero can arise. So, oh, and by the way, I forgot to emphasize that delta phi not equals to zero or not equals to pi means that um, phi and phi b is fixed like this. And because of that, a will start chasing b. So this is what happened in the, you know, in the previous version. Let's go back to the, or, yeah, so here, yeah, in this, oh, there we go. 
So, I mean, the 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 model that I consider in the latter half is basically the same as this one. So, in the aligned phase, the delta phi is zero. In the anti-aligned is pi, and but this chiral phase that we call where it's you have this JSON runaway mode can have delta phi that's not equal to zero nor pi, and that you can intuitively understand by because a is not equal. So if um, you have this case of one run. So now um, the intuition behind why, and what I'm arguing here is for this to happen, you need a microscopic noise. Um, otherwise you only could have gotten these two. And I can have give an intuitive answer to why that's the case. So in the absence of the noise, you know, let's say A and B, let's say A, J, A, B is larger than minus J, B, A which means that A is better than B at chase and runaway. So at the end of the day, after some while, A will catch B and that's the end because A have more desire to catch B. But um, so that's why in the absence of noise, that's that. But, um, but if you add noise to this system, this ideal situation is kind of reset by the noise and the, and runaway motion will restart. But when it's only two spin case, that's going to be just random, you know, brand new motion with chase and runaway. But here, in this case, um, because it's a uh, many body system, this phase get rigid, and therefore you get the delta phi that's, you know, conversely constant. And you need that. So, so the combination of noise and the many body interaction and the non-reciprocal interaction is going to fix this delta phi. It's kind of the picture that I have. Okay, thanks. So, uh, yeah, so, 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 so this, I mean, what this means then is that if you take your two particle problem and just solve that problem with noise, what you get is you get the chiral phase, but your thing is constantly changing. Your, yeah, yeah, your, yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah. it's gonna say this way for a while, but because the noise will, you know, can have this, you know, just like in the, I mean, in the two body problem with double well potential, you can jump from one from here to here and with a microscope, you know, microscopic time scale. But um, just like in the, uh, why the spontaneous symmetry breaking can occur in the presence of many, yeah, in the presence of many body interactions. Um, this, you know, all of our needs law well, uh, can um, tell you that it takes exponentially long, long time to bump up. Yeah, so that's yeah. what like the stabilization of this chiral phase is. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, I guess we always you are here until um, first until this week, but I'll come back two weeks. Okay, so let's.